Oh, man. You know what I'm going to do when we get done with this cast? You going to go get a Suki? Oh, that sounds good. Um, but no. I'm going to go home and I'm going to take a hot bath because I'm cold. That sounds good. I'm just sit in the bathtub. Oh, we are on the right bottom side of the map. I got the pleasure to, um, for the very first time, cast Jon Snow. A North American Zerg player I don't know a whole lot about, other than the fact that he's still very young. And he's been beyond the wall. And he's been <laughs> and he's been around as well. I don't you want to say, like, he's been around for a time. I was like, yeah, that's right, man. I cast... I mean, I've seen games from him in the past. I don't think I've cast him, but... Yes, he has been around, but no, of course, you have to go with something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little bit of a ladder star. I think um, most of the North play uh, top um, top North American players probably know about him mm -hmm. uh, because he does tear up the Grandmaster ranks. His opponent in the top left-hand corner, the Red Protoss player, is Root Puck. A very well-known streamer. Yep. Someone who played Wings of Liberty even uh, during the time where Heart of the Storm was already very popular. And that's the moment that Puck kind of started making a name for himself a little bit with all his cool Colossus drops and whatnot. And after that, Puck has shown us that he's much more than just that fancy Protoss who can show off how to micro a Colossus against low masters players with no stim marines. <laughs> nah, Puck is fantastic. I love his multitasking. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes, you know, you see those videos. Yeah. It's like Dragon beating up people in Silver League. It's like, well, Dragon, that's very cool, but you should be better than that, and I know you're better than that. Anyways, uh, Puck has shown us over the last four, five, six months that he is, without a doubt, and absolutely without a shadow of a doubt, one of the best North American Protoss players. And, you know, on a good day, on a very good day, he might even be the best. But of course, lately, Hawk has been really stepping it up again. Mm -hmm. We have Minigun. State. We got State, who had a very good run in Shoutcraft America. So it's hard to call Puck the best, but he's definitely among the best five, in my opinion. Certainly top five. Yeah. A top five control too. At least. With that bar prism, top one. <laughs> and he's going to go with the, uh, the Nexus first. Which is not something that we're yeah. that we've been seeing a lot of. And at least not today. like cool. That means that I don't have to worry about stupid mothership. Puck's like, no, <laughs> no. Oh, These are the moments as a proto you're chasing, and you really hope he doesn't have the money. <laughs> and, and then you wait for that drone to sit still, but then it's more immediately, and you're like, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's not good. I should play proto. I love this fuck fuck as well. Getting the fight in here temporarily, mm -hmm. waiting in. Still. I'd like to see his links come back again though, because yeah, but then he can warp in the side of score and put the probe on hold. This is a really weird wall up, because I think they can run on. You could get past, but not going to. John Snowing. On the right. You don't roll that way. Is this a full wall up here on the left side? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Interesting wall up. I like it if it works. I don't know, man. I think that pylon at the top could be hit by roaches. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, but two roaches, maybe, maybe one, at least one, maybe two. Either way, Jon Snow is going to have a good time, droning up for a little while. This is old school ZVP, almost like we're playing Wings of Liberty. Someone goes for a fast expand, doesn't even can rush. And you're going to go up against three hat trees before the four minute mark. After that, you're going to face a lot of drones. And where is Puck going to take this? If I have to make a guess right now, Ben, if you're going to say, what is Puck going to do? I say he's going to go up. Two base, Twilight Council, plus two upgrades. Link Stalkers, Immortals, a few sentries, Mothership Core, and he's gonna win. I think it's definitely gonna be a two base attack. I am 100% confident. 90% nah, confident. You can be 100%. 90% confident in that prediction. I would not give you million to one odds. But uh, I don't think that Puck is gonna try to go to three base here. That would just give too much of an economic edge to Jon Snow, who still hasn't taken any gas, by the way. No, <laughs> it's like six minutes. I guess six minutes. Okay, there we go. Six minutes, ten seconds, he dropped both uh, extractors, even a little bit before that. First sentry is on the way. I'm, of course, curious to see if my prediction is accurate. You know, Puck might go up to three bases, but still do the same thing. It just seems like Puck has it figured out how to win with Blink Stalkers, Immortals, and Sentries on Belshia Vestas against Zerg. And I've tried this build too, and it's gone so bad for me <laughs> that I felt I had, to, I had to apologize personally to Puck. Like, Puck, I just... You know. I mean, it's not a full wall. The sentry just went between the Cyber Core and the Nexus. Yeah, but I didn't mean on that side. I mean yeah, on this I side. Yeah, I know what you mean. That's good. But still. But yeah, I just like my execution was a disgrace to Puck's build. I felt I had to apologize, so I did. I said, "Fuck, I will never do that to your build again." Overlord sacrifices being sent, and there's not really a whole lot to, to scout yet. You see these three gates. Yeah, which but doesn't say that much. I think that's just gonna be good for Puck because, as far as I, if Puck wants to do what we what we spoke about before, then is that he's not even gonna use these gates for now. He's just gonna drop a twilight right behind this. Maybe a robotic facility, maybe not. But 
Is he checking to take a third? Yeah. I mean, he might do. He might go to a, to a third. I'm game. glad I did not make that 90% confidence bet. Yeah, but he could still do the same build that I mentioned before. Yeah. I, I know I said it two base, but he he can do it of both base. He can do it of two and three base. But if he does it two base, then he makes an early poke to reset the drone count a little bit. We will see. I still think he's gonna go blink stalkers, robo, plus two, win. This is what Puck does in Belshi Vestige. I have no idea how. There's the Twilight. Mm -hmm. 12 drones on the way as well. Jon Snow is so far doing everything yeah, right. Jon Snow is running like a man, like a, like a normal server. Like a man behind the wall. Ain't that right? Hater. If I was on the wall, I would make lots of drones. That's for sure. What would you do if winter is coming? I would, uh, I would move south. <laughs> what if winter comes south? Should I just keep going south? What if you go so far south that you end up in the south pole? I would just be an unhappy camper. <laughs> I don't like being cold, man. Here we see uh, five gates going down now at once. Six gates even. Uh, there goes the blink research. Plus two. It's about to start right now. I'm going to look at this forge until we research the plus two. I don't care what else happens. I know there are a bunch of speedlings running by. Okay, sorry guys. I'm going to <laughs> <the> speedlings. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of four shoots went down, Parker realized he didn't want to deal with those uh, sweet links. Not now. George is still not spinning, but it should start soon. He's He's got the uh, money. Got the money. Start he's got that upgrade, Puck. He's got the ambition. Wait, if I go add a BC style, we can go all the way around the forge. So I gotta follow your vision. Okay. And then you gotta spin. I'm not, not gonna good. happen. We're not playing. <laughs> <laughs> We're not playing right now. Big speed link run by, massive run by even. Puck didn't keep his zealot on hold. He might have to recall them. Or maybe wiping the sentry over here, force field the ramp. He's gonna lose a lot. Couple of speed things will run into his main base. What a successful run by here for Jon Snow. It's gonna hurt, man. Puck's in a little bit of trouble. Did he recall without this army? Uh, he's uh, he's pushing with his main army. So there's slings in his main base while the meat, while a few stalkers and sentries uh, push into the natural. So Zergling's still doing damage back. In oh my God, Jon Snow's forced to pull drones right here. Hydras are popping yeah, out. I do think he'll. Eventually stabilize? He'll definitely, sta uh, he'll definitely stabilize. He has so many links on the way. He has Hydras on the way. Oh my god. Spock lost so many probes. I think he recalled without his army, Ben. I wasn't looking at the Monastery Forest. I was looking at the links. But Spock is going to lose most of these units. Blink is not ready yet. He's going to have uh -oh. to retreat. He's going to get swarmed. And things are looking very good for Jon Snow. This is big trouble. Puck's going to try to fall back oh to god. his reinforcing pylons. Spock has 36 probes remaining. Don't ben. overdo it here, Jon Snow. I don't guess there's any way that he could overdo no, it. There's no, there's no overdoing it. Blink is ready right now, so we can finally start microing a little bit. I am... Uh, he must have recalled without his army, right? I, it was so weird, I just... I didn't... No, I but didn't like the Mothership Corps had no energy and there were no photon overcharge. Yeah, he warped in units, he did something funny, and then there was an army in two places. So he, I guess you're right. Uh, it's 82 supply for Puck. There's 104 supply on the map for Jon Snow, who did get supply blocked and all of that. He's got 62 drones mm. out. His economy... Pretty unscathed, only lost four drones. Uh, meanwhile, he killed 20 probes and just brutalized Puck's economy. Puck's on 45 yeah. harvesters right now. And above all, he killed a lot of stalkers and stuff and sentries, stuff that Puck normally doesn't lose until his big attack. So things are looking good for Jon Snow, who's also starting his ranged attack oh, upgrade. Oh, he's er, switching for, into Mutaswitch. Yeah, his, his air attack upgrade. What, what, what? On the Muta switch. And, uh-oh. I'm a little bit surprised by that, man. My, my event right page expired its time and it minimized my screen. So. You're not lagging. Fortunately. A couple of links and hydras. Okay, there you oh, go, Ben. There it goes. Sorry, guys. Fuck's like, Mr. Bitter, get out. <laughs> oh. uh, this is going to be so hard for Fuck because he's going to have to deal with his hydra link army on the right side of the map. Then Mutas is going to fly into his main base. Does he have anything here? He's not building cannons yet. He's completely unaware of what he's facing potentially. And man, that must be kind of a blow to Puck because I felt everything was going the way that Puck normally likes the game to unfold on Dolce Vestic. Yeah, it's, it's super uncommon for a player of Puck's caliber to, uh, to, to to basically take that much damage to a Ling run by. Like, that just isn't supposed to happen, so... A single Zealot would have changed everything, or a single Sentry. Uh, Mutas are going to make their way up into the main base and begin their harassment. Puck's army is not in position for this. What is he going to do? He might want to try and I thought he might want to recall, recall but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. He's just going to send a few back. Yeah, I guess he's attacking in the midst of this. Weird that uh, Jon Snow is still managing to deal this kind of damage. He's killed 32 probes in total now. So uh, we're just going to let this... Yeah, I don't really continue. know how he's going to make something happen over here. I think Jon Snow should just build a lot of spines. 
you know, maybe sacrifice one base, maybe my, sacrifice the second base, but at the end of the day, I don't think he should ever lose. There's so many zealots and sentries in this little fight. 17 Hydras as well, there's just nothing good. Oh, he's not force fielding, man! Okay, finally he force fields. Yep, and uh, these links are just gonna swarm around the sentries, and uh, you know, Puck is able to force field out the Hydras, but he just can't get any headway, man. He's, he's having a hard time gaining any sort of ground. So the uh, one's kind of okay for him for some reason, but I mean he's not mining of his main. He's on two bases. He's fighting a f well, not really a four base. Perhaps Jon Snow not saturating uh, that base the way mm -hmm. he could have. Muta's gonna pick off a couple more probes here. Yeah, he just can't mine in the main. Stalkers have uh, had to go all the way back. This is, I'm not sure if this is enough stalker. Oh. Mm -hmm. Only has plus one yeah. as well. Uh -oh. He never started. Uh oh, <laughs> Links coming forward once more. Hydras this time are able to get in the mix in the the force fields. Not as good, but still kind of okay. He's going to kill off a few of these Hydralisks, but it's going to cost him some sentries and some stalkers. And the, the biggest point here is that Puck cannot afford to trade, whereas Jon Snow can. Jon Snow can trade for days, man. Because winter is not coming yet for Jon Snow. No, I think, in fact, that it's, uh, it's a little warm and sunny in Jon Snow's world right now. <laughs> Where do you think Jon Snow lives in the U.S.? Philadelphia, because it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, but well, his name is Jon Snow. Then I don't know Montana, Kansas, Kansas, Kansas University. Sentry is gonna get swarmed by these links as well. Beautiful pick up there. Both links will fall. Molly of course might even go down to the bounds of all these mutas. Time war, time war doesn't work on me. <laughs> you keep trying until one day it slows all the mutas down. Right? Double star is going on the way. Fucking ever, you know, somehow buy enough time for himself that he can actually start mining. Of his main and such. Oh, he's actually mining a little bit secretly. Like the Mutas are not aware of that. Mutas are going to be heading there soon, man. And uh, it's going to be like actually I heard double Stargate going to go down now. I don't think. Oof, day late and a dollar short. No, I think it's his best choice. I don't mind it that much. I think if he buys time to get eight phoenixes out, he has. Uh, we have a real game on our hands. Yeah, we'll see. I think uh, Mutas are going to continue doing some damage here in the main base. I guess that's enough stalkers to chase him away. I really like that Muta switch. I mean, uh, that Phoenix switch. It's very late, and I, I think above all, Jon Snow is not going to expect it. He's researching plus two, but if uh, we can somehow find a way to raise enough money for a fleet beacon, well, there, there we go. Goes. People are very the generous these does days. Go down. Man, these fund raises are effective. Somebody sent uh, Kickstarters. Somebody sent Puck some balloons. Now uh, let's hope that this uh, fund raise was worth it. Otherwise, I feel betrayed. I want my esports minerals back. Uh, I, Kev, I just don't know, man. These phoenixes. Uh, there are 30 stalkers out. This is going to be a very difficult army for Puck to deal with. 54 lings, over 20 hydras, and a lot of mutalisks as well. Photon overcharge will go down, and Jon Snow's going to back out of there. Uh, I, I, I believe Puck's buying time, man. I he's definitely buying Puck. time. And uh, this is what he's going to have to do to get back in this thing. If he can get eight phoenixes out with... Now we can uh, figure right, out the name. Four now, soon to be six. So he's going to have them out. Something crystals. Oh, I have to pick up my tooltips. Oh, it's called Anium Crystals? It's called Anion Pulse, Pulse Crystals. 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 I was so. close. Anion? Anion. Like an <laughs> A-N-I-O-N? Like, like Anion. An <laughs> oh, okay, that makes sense. Johnson is going to try to go for another run. My Puck needs to buy a little more time for himself. Forge might get picked up. Uh, I think this is a fight Jon Snow can take if he parks the mutas yeah. over that group of stalkers, but I it looks like no. Can, You're underestimating Puck. Puck is playing an absolutely fantastic PvZ here. He's buying the time that he needs to get he, Phoenix Rain out. He's doing great stuff. I, I just feel like Jon Snow's able to fight, and he's choosing not to. Force Field, of course, is keeping these Hydras out of the yeah, fights, which is which is very important. And you shouldn't forget that like, that was also Blink Stalker Paradise. That was just like all the Zerg units would stream in one by one, and Puck would keep microing them, and we know that Puck can micro like that. So I think that Jon Snow was just, you know, not allowing himself to find himself in a position where... Mm -hmm. Is this two groups of mutas? Oh, for Phoenix a second, I thought this Jadon. gonna finish up. Oh, yes yeah, it, is. it is. There's no sense in killing that. That's well. not gonna do anything for you, Jon Snow. We're a little bit of a link run by once more, and even a Hydra. Hydra, how did you get up there? <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to go... You're not supposed to be part of a run by. Jon Snow's doing this fantastic. He picked up so many... Oh, Ooh, this is gonna be risky. Puck that's, has to that's, that's potentially every muta. Jon Snow, you've got to fight. You're gonna lose them all. Yeah. All right, we got ourselves a game. Well, we got ourselves more than... Oh, 11 Corruptors on the way. Now, that's interesting. So we're going to have maybe Corrupted Muta. Jon Snow is on five bases while Puck... Well, can you even call it three? Uh, I wouldn't really want to call it three. Now he's really going to have to micro his Phoenixes as well, though. Hey, picking up, did he pick off the Fleet Beacon? Yes, he did. Yeah. So that means no plus two for the, uh, yeah. for the air weapons. Yeah. That's uh, actually kind of good. 
It helps. It definitely helps. And uh, Corruptor Muta is a very difficult army composition for Protoss it. to deal with. It's so strong and, and pretty easily microed for Zerg. Just keep the Corruptors in front and the Mutas in the back mm. and, uh, and uh, go to town. Well, we have a lot of stalkers God, that as is well. so many Blink Stalkers. Kevin, 40. he's got 40 Stalkers. What? I mean, that makes Lings basically obsolete. It's going to be hard for Hydras as well. Here we go. Corruptors overhead. They're going to be taking a lot of damage from the Stalkers. Muta's doing a good job of splashing on everything. Hydras are just eliminated from this fight. A great engagement for Puck. And Jon Snow is forced back. He's going to reinforce with 17 more Hydralisk. Muta count falls to 8. They're basically a non-factor now. Mm -hmm. Corruptor count fell, fell to 5 as well while he had 11. So he lost 6 Corruptors. This is a pretty big loss. Still, uh, air upgrades continuing for Jon Snow. 3-3. Three, three on the way for, uh, for well, not three threes, what? plus three armor on the way on the ground. Adrenal glands being researched for these zerglings. What is, oh, you mean uh, plus one armor for the armor? Yeah. yeah, plus one armor and plus three ground carapace. Also roach speed. So it's going to be a switch into roach, which... Which I which don't really believe. I believe in the roach, Ben, but not now. It's a little late. <laughs> um, it's a little late. 23 minutes it's is a mo a, It's is a month a late time. and $100 short. <laughs> Or at least thirty dollars. Twenty dollars in his pocket. Well, right now Puck's saying this could be awesome. Yeah, this uh, this is such a fantastic game from Puck. Like uh, obviously it, it went horribly wrong early game, but the way that he hang in there, the way that yeah, he fought he's back. He's back up to seventy probes, man. I I think Puck is ahead right now. I know that sounds crazy, but I think he is. If he's able to keep this fort base alive, maybe not now, but next time. Not going to go up this time. Lings are able to deny it. Uh, he, the only the bad thing is that his upgrades are not that fantastic yet. He's resetting 2-2. Two, two. Jon Snow's got a lot of money, and he's going Ultra. So he's actually resetting 2-1, sorry. The armor upgrade was the very first Ultra one. Hydra, in my opinion, the ultimate in-game sort of army storms. This is kind of a weird fight for Puck. I'm not sure if I like it, man. It can't really micro to any position. Yep, Hydra's coming in from behind. It's a good engagement. Phoenix is going to die to these Corruptors. And uh, for the first time in a while, Jon Snow nets a win. He's going to reload with more Hydras and Lings, though, with, uh, with Blink. These Hydras can't run away. Jon Snow, you can't leave, man. The last of the Phoenixes, well, they're, they're going to they're gonna stand and fight, man. Oh, my God, 17 more Hydras in a way. That was, uh, like... Can you call it trading? <laughs> what Jon Snow did there? There was, a, there was an expensive trade. The fight, the engagement was awesome, but then was just the thing. You cannot run away from Link Stalkers. Uh -oh. He's going to swarm these Stalkers, Link's though. from behind. It's going to be hard to retreat from this fight. Oh my God. Puck is blinking exceptionally well. There are three Ultras on the way, and they're going to be uh, yeah, game Jon changer. He might not it. even need him, man. Jon Snow doing work. Puck's in big trouble. Down below 100 supply. Jon Snow's at 180. What an excellent PBZ here between two fantastic North American Starker players. This Nexus does get cancelled, but this engagement over here roughly two minutes ago was just marvelous from Jon Snow. That was a Stefano-like engagement. Blink Starkers couldn't micro to any position, and after that Puck feel like he had to do something, but he wasn't able to. GG! What a great game by Jon Snow. Phenomenal.